You know, ladies and gentlemen, for a period of three or four years in the 1970s, this guy was a top three quarterback in the NFL, probably the forgotten superstar. I remember him well because I followed his career coming out of LSU. I figured the Montreal Alouettes or the Argos or the Tiger Cats would try for him if the NFL didn't draft him, but he went too high in the draft for the CFL management to try to get him. Uh, when I first had people talk about Tom Brady, I remember years ago, I said, well, if he ends up as good as this player, I'm going to respect him. And, you know, Tom Brady's a good quarterback. I have to give him, but he plays by a system. But this guy was a, had panache, and he, he, he didn't work through a system. He took more hits than I can remember or people can remember because every time he got hurt, it was like, well, is this guy going to literally get killed on the field? But... When Burt Jones was the top player in all of football in the mid-1970s, we thought he was going to lead the Colts to another Super Bowl. He replaced Johnny Unitas. Never happened. Tried it with the Rams. Didn't happen as well. But my God, what a talent. Now, Bertram Hayes Jones <coughs> wore number seven for the Colts. Uh, born September 7, lucky seven, in Ruston, Louisiana. The Ruston Rifle. Now, 6'3", 210, perfect size for quarterback. Played in the NFL for the Colts and the Rams. Now, at Ruston High School, he was given a nickname again, the Ruston Rifle. Jones played college football at LSU, a very controversial few years, because of the battle with the coaches and his fellow players. Uh, he was battling for the quarterback spot from the start. There was a whole bunch of articles done in Sports Illustrated and Sport about it. He is the son of former NFL running back Dub Jones of the Browns. He was named the NFL's best player, MVP in 76, with the Colts. And 2016 was inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame. He would have been an NFL Hall of Fame, but unfortunately with the Raiders and the other key teams the AFC, that's what really stopped him. Now, when he attended LSU in Baton Rouge, where he played for the LSU Tigers, uh, he only started two games prior to the end of his junior year, but he started every game thereafter, leading as LSU to a dynamite 12-2-1 record. In 71, he threw for 945 yards with nine touchdowns and four picks while splitting time with Paul Lyons. Against the wishes of LSU fans, Jones was forced to share quarterback duties with Lyons because Jones is concerning bickering with head coach Charlie McClendon over signal calling. That was an epic battle because... Jones didn't respect Charlie, and Charlie didn't respect Jones. Now, Lyons himself drew for over 800 yards and 11 TDs that year. Now, in 72, after taking over the, the head spot, he threw for 1,446 yards with 14 touchdowns and 7 interceptions on 199 pass attempts. Except for one week, he spent the entire system ranked the AP Top 10. One of Jones' fam most famous moments was the delay of game victory in a 1972 LSU versus Ole Miss contest where he led the uh, Tigers to a 17-16 last second win by hitting running back Brad Davis in the end zone for a TD as time expired. Now, according to legend, to this day, many believe that a clock malfunction on a previous play gave four seconds for Jones to complete the game-winning touchdown pass for LSU. Now, because LSU was not considered, uh, what do you call, a mainstream team, it was kind of bypassed. But if it would happen in Notre Dame or Iowa State game, it would have been amazingly, uh, uh, what do you call, an incorrect uh, judgment. Now, after the year, he became the first quarterback in LSU history to be awarded consensus All-America honors. Jones also finished fourth in the vote for the Heisman Trophy. I think it was shafted that year. And was named the National Collegiate Player of the Year by the Sporting News. Now, during his 17 games at LSU, he completed 52.6% of his passes for 3,225 yards and 28 touchdowns, which at the time was the most career passing yards and touchdowns of any quarterback in school history. And, of course, in 2016, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Now, Jones was projected by NFL scouts to be the first QB draft in 73. He was chosen second overall by the Colts to be the Colts' heir apparent to Johnny Unitas, who was later traded to San Diego to mentor Dan Fouts. Now, Jones' debut came on September 16, 73, in a loss to, of course, his father's former team, the Browns. During his eight-year tenure as the Colts' starting quarterback, Jones and his teammates enjoyed three consecutive AFC East Division titles between 75 and 77. But in each of those years, the Colts lost in the first round of the playoffs. The 77 playoff game was their most devastating defeat, known, of course, as the Ghosts of the Post, and when Dave Casper had the big catch that put the Colts under. It was the fourth longest game in NFL history as the Colts fell to the Oakland Raiders in overtime 37-31 on a key touchdown. Now, 
This is where the injuries kicked in. He missed most of 78 and 79 with a shoulder ailment, and the Colts fell the last place in the AFC East those two seasons. Now, the 76 regular season was Jones's <coughs> finest as a pro. He threw for 3,100 yards and a career-high 24 touchdowns, one of the first modern quarterbacks to see with Brady and Mahomes. He would be well attuned to the NFL in 2022. That year, combined passer rating of 102.5. He was only one of three quarterbacks to achieve a 100-plus passer rating during the entire decade of the 1970s, joining Roger Staubach, who happened in 71, and Stabler in 76. But these were 14 for 24 uh, pass uh, people, so it's uh, it's all a matter of uh, tenure. Now, AP called him the NFL Most Valuable Player in 76, and he was the NFL Offensive Player of the Year and a selected first-team All-Pro, and it was also named to the Pro Bowl. In 77, he was selected second-team All-Pro in the, the campaign. Now, the remainder of Jones's playing career beyond 77 was curtailed by numerous bad injuries, the first of which was a separated shoulder after a hit from Al uh, Baker in the Colts' 13-7 win, win over the Lions at the Silverdome on my birthday, August 26, 78, in the final pro season contest for both teams. Now, during an October 26, 80 game against the Cardinals, he made NFL history in the wrong way when he was sacked a record 12 times. This broke the record at, at the time held by numerous quarterbacks, including Jones's then backup, future line Greg Landry, who had been sacked 11 times when he was with the Lions in his first tenure uh, in a contest against the Cowboys on October 6, 75. In 82, his final season, he, he ended up with L.A., but he played in four contests before a neck injury forced him to retire. Now, ironically, eight years later in retirement, he participated in the first NFL quarterback challenge. He finished first in a retiree category and third in a regular competition. The regular top competition taking the top three finishers from the alumni and adding them to a regular field of current quarterbacks. Given his strong performance, Bobby Beathard, then the GM of the Chargers, wanted Jones to come out of retirement. A lot of CFL teams wanted him as well. But Jones said he was 30 at the time and chose not to risk it at the try comeback. Now, longtime scout Ernie uh, uh, Corsi is quoted saying that if Burt Jones had played under different circumstances, he probably wouldn't have been the greatest player ever, and I tend to agree. My God, when he was on, it was a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. And the French announcer that was doing the translation for the, for the game, he said, I think it was the greatest compliment I ever heard. He's the Gila Fleur of the, the Baltimore Colts. That's saying a lot. He was well-loved in Canada, for sure. John Riggins, the great one, as I've been quoted saying, Jones was the toughest competitor he has ever witnessed. On the eve of Super Bowl uh, uh, 17, New, uh, New England's Patriots head coach, excuse me, uh, Super Bowl uh, 40 uh, XLL, Two, excuse me about that, 42. Head coach Bill Belichick, in discussing his choices for the greatest QBs of all time, uh, described Jones as the best pure passer he had ever seen. Now, the aspects of Joe Montana, now, I wouldn't call Tom Brady a pure passer. Tom Brady is sort of like the Roger Staubach, Joe Montana, where if he need two minutes to score a touchdown. But Burt Jones scared a lot of defenses. Therefore, he put the blitz on him all the time because his footwork wasn't there. But you look at comparable players, Boomer Sison, uh, Phil, uh, Phil Sims, the USFL style like Jim Kelly, but Jim Kelly's big problem. He would take a lot of uh, hits because he called that the, the, the circular sack. But there was a game I watched Burt Jones. I think it was against... Oh, I think it was against uh, the Dolphins when uh, Greasy was still there. It was just amazing because... You know, the NHL had the big rivalries. You had Bobby Clark or Clark with the Flyers, Gilbert Perot with the Buffalo Sabres. You had Jean Prolevo and Pierre Larouche with the Pittsburgh Penguins at the time. So he was a comparable. He was the only superstar on this team because you can't remember any other Colts players after United States Raiders. It was just Burt Jones. Burt Jones and a cloud of dust, as we say. But for what he did at LSU, what he did with Baltimore, what he could have done in L.A., and the respect he has from his peers, he should get more recognition. But to my memory, I don't think he did much work as an NFL commentator. I know he did some college stuff, if I could be wrong here. But my God, what a, what a, what a pleasure to turn on a game back in the day, 73 to 77, like the bowl games and stuff, and to see him and the other, like Sam Bam coming, Cunningham and Tommy Clements and all that, the early uh, stars of the CFL of the 70s, see him in the college ring, Chuck Easley and all that. Uh, Burt Jones, again, I have enormous respect. But 
Did Tom Brady ever beat a team with a, with a quarterback the quality of Burt Jones? No. Pa uh, uh, Eli and Peyton Manning are okay, but are not as good as Burt Jones. I don't care what anybody says. I saw Burt Jones in his prime. And when you have Kenny Stabler and Roger Staubach and Kenny Anderson and all these great quarterbacks and he played off each other, it's like Burt Jones when, when he, would, he would always have a hard time in the playoffs, but the problem is when you're a one-player team, that's what happens in the playoffs. You've got to have multiple players. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's our latest uh, NFL Vintage Podcast. If you like what we're doing, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, if you have requests, they're always, always appreciated and always highly considered. Thanks a lot. And to the fans of Burt Jones, you know I take up for you. I'm not going to say that Burt Jones wasn't important to the NFL. And as soon as Burt Jones came away from Baltimore... That's where the franchise move. There's a connection, isn't there? Thanks for listening. Bye.